This is one of the coolest marinas. We really like this place, Shelter Bay. It's built on the old US base called Fort Sherman. And it's really in the jungle. It is just absolutely miles away from any habitation. We're Cheryl and Paul Shard, hosts of the Distant Shores Sailing Adventure TV series. We've been cruising for over 30 years, currently aboard our variable draft Southerly 480 sailboat in Panama. We've spent the last few months at Shelter Bay in Panama with its excellent boatyard facilities located right at the Caribbean end of the Panama Canal. It seems to be busy year-round, safely out of the hurricane belt, according to our insurance company Pantaneous, and also the logical stopover for anyone preparing for the crossing of the canal. Shelter Bay is also a good base for exploring the Caribbean coast of Panama and the offlying San Blas Islands. So yes, as we take on this next expedition <laughs> to San Blas, our distant shores tree, Captain Juanjo will be skipping just for three more seconds. <laughs> I'm gone. Enjoy, guys. Thanks, buddy. Bye. <laughs> Joining the Caribbean Sea and the Pacific Ocean, the Panama Canal is busy with ships preparing for the transit, and Shelter Bay is just inside the three mile long protective breakwater. So we have to call in to Cristobal Station just to tell them we're leaving the harbor and we'd like to go through their busy traffic zone. I'll give them a call. Pretty busy on the radio here about today. Cristobal Station, yacht, sailing yacht distant chores, leaving Shelter Bay and request permission to exit the breakwater over. Okay, distant chores. I got a vessel approaching to the breakwater, entering the breakwater at this moment. The vessel will turn to starboard and they will proceed uh, to the west. So be aware of that, keep clear of that vessel over. Roger, I see him approaching and I will keep well out of his way to see Chorus to anyone. The wind drops to a flat calm and we motor three hours onto Linton Bay, but find there's a new leak in the drive shaft seal when we're motoring, something to deal with at the dock the next day. project in the aft cabin we're working on the shaft seal so I've got this here uh, bilge pump as some water is going to come into the boat when we do it. This hose is connected to a central bilge pump so you can use it to pump water out from anywhere on board. So this is our prop shaft there's our beautiful Yanmar 4JH80 motor love that engine and our gorgeous Aqua Drive, which we've had on every single one of our four boats, has had an Aqua Drive since 1987 when we bought our first one. And that uh, acts as a thrust bearing here uh, for the, all the power of the engine goes out from the gearbox uh, into this thrust bearing and now out to the engine drive shaft. And then this is our seal made by Tides Marine. And there's a seal in here instead of a stuffing box. So normally you get zero um, water comes in that, like normally a stuffing box would drip, but uh, the Tides Marine seal doesn't drip, it just sits there dry all the time. But then after a few years, perhaps it's worn out and it needs to be replaced. Because the spare seal is already on the shaft, it can be installed in the water, otherwise we'd have to remove the shaft to get the new seal on, and that would mean a haul out. And apparently you can do it in the water with only a certain amount of water coming in. I'm not necessarily confident about that. So I've got this here, a bilge pump ready to go. We can sort of have this down taking water out of the back of the, the little shaft bilge here. The parts here are the stern tube, which is back in here. And then this is the seal that attached clamps onto it. So there's seawater in this. And then this is the housing that holds the actual shaft seal where the shaft can spin and uh, you know, water won't come in. 
Apparently we'll only get a few meter a few meters liters of water in. This would be a good time to go and watch the video again of how to do this on the Tides Marine website. It shows how it works. Um, but I have watched it a couple times, so I'm not gonna watch it one more time. And I've also got some 400 grit sandpaper. And I'm gonna take a quick cleanup of the shaft after we remove the uh, seal because it's most important that the shaft doesn't have any imperfections or perhaps in this case it's got some old uh, calcium from being in the water a long time and being still for a long time. So. So looks like we're getting a seal out slowly here, trying to take it evenly out all around. Alrighty. So there's the seal. So you just need to remove the seal now. That's the old one. So the old seal is gone now showing how neatly I broke it. I'm sure it was in pretty good shape. And now we have the exposed area of the shaft. It looks like it could use a little bit of... It's funny to have a hole in the back of the boat, water coming in and I'm sitting here sanding away. All right, and then we can put the new seal back in. And the new seal goes back in there like that. That's the pressure plate that pushes it in place. And this is to line up. Goes back in there. Hopefully this is all gonna work. Otherwise we'll have an emergency haul out this afternoon. It's kind of cool. It's a good idea. I think it's a neat product. We've had these in a couple boats and um, this is the first time we've actually had one need changing, I think. So. In I think 31 two step, years. <laughs> two Step had a similar product, but a little different, and we changed it once in 18 years of cruising. So, and meanwhile, you get basically zero drips of water in the bilge from the stuffing box. Mm -hmm. Cool. I leave paper towel under the shaft, making it easy to spot any leaks, then head ashore at Linton Bay Marina and find a familiar boat hauled out in the yard. Hey, it's Parlay Revival. Look at this. <laughs> hey guys, how's it going? Fun that we could catch up with you. Yeah, you too. I'm Colin. This is Parle. Uh, yeah, you too. Please tell us how did you end up here? What's your story? Um, well, we we were planning on sailing around the world. It's a hurricane damaged boat, and uh, we fixed it up in the BVIs, and then we went to then we did a lot of cruising, and then we went to Guatemala and continued fixing her up. And then we thought we were done and we went through the canal and we're on the Pacific side of Panama and we're about to head across the Pacific and our bulkhead snapped. So the boat basically, both of the hulls just went outwards and the shrouds went completely loose and um, it was pretty terrifying. So we turned around, came back to Panama and um, we knew we had to haul out. We knew we had a big problem. And then if yeah, as if things couldn't get worse, we got struck by lightning, lost everything except our batteries and solar. So, yeah, we needed to do a major, major refit. So we came back through the canal that we had just gone through, came here to Linton Bay and, yeah, we're just doing, a, doing the repairs here. So we're really fortunate we've got um, Lagoon, like the naval architects who designed the boat, they're helping us with the repair, oh. like with the advice. So they're telling us how much glass to use, what kind of glass and where to reinforce and pay particular attention. Now, I'm a chief engineer on super yachts, so it's, it's not exactly sailing, but yeah, definitely got uh, marine engineering experience. 
so I kind of understand the forces and stuff involved. And we do weekly episodes every uh, Sunday, 10 o'clock in the morning. Um, been going for about two and a half years now. And the name of the channel? Parlay Revival. So the boat name's Parlay and we revived it. So it's Parlay Revival. Um, yeah, every Sunday on YouTube. It's the Wonder Puppy. This is the latest crew member, Linda. Beautiful. We had two different riggers come and have a look and they both found nothing wrong with the rigging. So we had to go deeper and the only way to see that bulkhead is to destroy part of the interior. So we committed to that and, and knocked the uh, trim off and, and started breaking the boat and we saw that the bulkhead had cracked and kind of slipped up neck beside itself. There were some key things that we found um, that indicated that the boat was bent um, and for the, there was a 40 millimeter drop down the, down the midships from the sides was 40 millimeters down. So that can't happen without something breaking. The boat's not designed to oh, flex that, that much. Taken courage to start tearing things apart. Yeah, and it was frustrating because it took so long to find it. Mm -hmm. And we just, you know, we had all these clues and we were just sticking our head into these crazy places just trying to find something and then we, we saw the crack. I can't even remember which side it was, but both sides had cracked. So, um, yeah, pretty, uh, pretty tough discovery. Yeah. But also good at the same time, like we were saying, like it's a blessing in disguise, a well disguised blessing. Because <laughs> yes. um, yes, we were about to head across the Pacific. Right. Yeah. Glad you're here safe, and I'm sorry you have this huge job in front of you, but yeah. uh, you've proven once before that you can tackle these things. Yeah, so. yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> Holy. So this is the actual bulkhead that snapped, snapped right here and the hull came upwards like that. Oh so it was just, it was destroyed so we had to cut it out. Um, so, so these that, bulkheads are all glassed in, they're not just ply, they're, they're glassed in. glass on the back. It's just one, one sheet of 15 millimeter ply and uh, the way Laguna telling us to fix it is to put two more sheets of ply here which you see down below and then glass it all in after that. Yeah. So, grinding this out was extremely, extremely unpleasant. You just covered in dust. Mm -hmm. I know those good old days. Yeah, I'm sure you do. <laughs> we put in all the bulkheads for our old boat. Yeah, yeah. From scratch, but we didn't have to take anything out to start with because there was nothing there. So. Yeah. It's all going to be repaired with polyester, uh, with epoxy, and we, we're tabbing it right back to here um, using 600 gram biaxial glass. So, she'll be strong. Yeah, well, we'll look forward. We'll look forward to watching your channel, yeah. and uh, we hope that you too will follow Parlay Revival and uh, find out what happens with the continuing adventure. It's 50 miles from Linton Bay to the San Blas Islands, and the winds are almost always from the northeast. That's nearly on the nose for us and there's usually big waves from the front as well. Luckily our boat is very good sailing upwind or close hauled as we say. Okay, that is, this is East Hollandaise Key, or West Hollandaise Keys? West. West or East, there's the Hollandaise Keys. You can see by the sunset over behind me. That's a good start to this uh, little place and a cruise here on a very bumpy, windy, rainy day. So, <laughs> time for a beer. Join us next time as we explore the San Blas Islands, get into the water to test the new Lumar Epsilon anchor, and check in with Lisa, our friend from a visit here 11 years ago.
Thanks for watching. Your views, likes, comments, and shares help us a lot. If you'd like more in depth information and consultation, we invite you to check out the Distant Shores Cruising Club. Membership includes early access to videos, member only QAs, live chats, meetups, sailing opportunities, and many other benefits to help you prepare for your own adventure. Thanks again for your support. See you on the water!